respected brothers and sisters in Islam we indeed praise and we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has showered his blessings and mercy upon us being from amongst the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we praise and we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has just allowed us to witness a month of Ramadan which was a very beautiful month mashallah and it was a month of competition of good deeds among ourselves and we exerted ourselves my dear respected brothers and sisters we became tired we woke up at times that we would not normally wake up throughout the entire year and we as believers we have to understand my dear respected brothers and sisters that our objective on the face of the earth is actually what we were doing in Ramadan our objective on the face of the earth وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind nor have I created the jinnat except that they worship me. And how do we know how to make a connection with Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is because of the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. The Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam has come down on the face of the earth and they have, they have taught us a way of life. All the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's the last and final one and alhamdulillah he came with a perfect and a complete deen. He came to perfect all what the other Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam came with. And Mufti Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi mentions that in Surah Al-A'raf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of a covenant that we took with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Alam Al-Arwah that we will follow we will follow what the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam came with. We will follow their teachings to a T. And this is the only way that we will become successful. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, today inshallah, we would like to go through a few points of Lata'if al-Ma'arif by Alama Hafiz ibn, Haba, ibn Rajab al-Hambali that he has mentioned about the month of Shawwal and it is very, very great lessons for us, my dear respected brothers and sisters, coming out from the month of Ramadan. A, what do we leave with the month of Ramadan? And he, what the, he says that, firstly, the month of Ramadan, mashallah, it came between Sha'ban and now we are in Shawwal. So therefore, fasting in Shawwal is something good. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has mentioned about the six days fast of Shawwal and it is something overall the ikhtilaf inshallah it is something good everyone will acknowledge it is something good mashallah and fasting after the month of Ramadan and fasting before the month of Ramadan Alama Hafiz Ibn Rajab al hambali he says that you know it is considered like the sunnah salawat that we perform the sunnah salat that we perform before our faru salah and the sunnah salah that we perform after our far salah, it makes, makes an amends for whatever wrong that we have done in our farz. So if by chance there was some nuqsan in our farz fasting in Ramadan, then inshallah, fasting in shawwal can make up for it. And by extension, other than fasting in shawwal, any other fast that we do in any of the other months that are sunnah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make up for the wrongs or the nuqsan and the defects that we did in our, in the fast of Ramadan. So he mentions that you know, mashallah, it is like the fasting, the fasting in Shawwal will make up and make an amends for the wrongs that we have done in Ramadan. Also, in the, the fasting of Shawwal, it is like Siyam al Dahar. We are not as believers, we are not allowed to fast continuously without breaking our fast. But Alhamdulillah, when we have fasted for 30 days of the month of Ramadan, multiplied by 10, inshallah, 300, 
then fasting six days multiplied by 10, inshallah, it will bring us to 60, 360 days for the year. He goes on to mention, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that when we fast in the month of Shawwal, it is an indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted our fast of Ramadan. Why? Because it is a statement from our, our pious predecessors. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted an action that we have done, then He also gives us the tawfiq, inshallah, to do more than that after it. So we have fasted for the month of Ramadan. We don't know in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if those fasts are accepted in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But alhamdulillah, the ulama teach us and the salaf al salihun and the pious people of the past, they teach us that if inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq to do another good action like that, fasting in shawwal, then inshallah it is an indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted our fast of Ramadan. And mashallah, in the month of Ramadan, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has taught us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive our sins. He will forgive our sins. And mashallah, we as believers, we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. We have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiving for our sins. Because we are sinful human beings. And we have to learn that as sinful human beings, we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the courage and giving us the strength to do ibadat, whereby He will forgive us. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He used to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon being capable of doing amal al-salih and doing righteous deeds. And hence the reason that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam giving shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his favors, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sins had been forgiven, whatever was from before and whatever is afterwards. And the sahabas were confused, O Messenger of Allah, why is it that you would wake up in the night until your feet is swollen? The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Afala akuna abdan shakura, shall I not be a grateful servant? So we as believers, we have to ponder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, as long as I did it right, He would have forgiven my sins in the month of Ramadan. So therefore, I need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness of my sins. So inshallah, if we fast in this month of Shawwal, we will show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are grateful to Him for forgiveness of our sins. In the, ayats of in, the, in the ayats of fasting also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminds us, That, mashallah, we will complete the, the time of fasting and we need to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon what He has guided us. So much so, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that some of the, the, the pious scholars of the past and the pious salaf of salihun when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the tawfiq to, to perform qiyamul layl in the night, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the tawfiq to perform qiyamul layl of the night, they would fast for the day. They would fast during the day. Shukran lit tawfiq lil qiyam. Why? To thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for allowing them to wake up in the night, for worship, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something, this is an attitude that we have to develop, my dear respected brothers and sisters, from the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the pious people learned after him. We, alhamdulillah, the month of Ramadan has come and it, and it has gone. We cannot tell ourselves that it has gone and it has gone. Whatever we, we are able to pull from there, no, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the month of Ramadan. And when we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the month of Ramadan, it means we will be continuous upon good deeds afterwards. Why is it that these pious people, they would wake up in the night for tahajjud? They would wake up in the night for tahajjud. And then mashallah, shukran lillah for waking up for tahajjud. They would fast during the day. 
They would fast during the day because we all know that mashallah we made extra effort in the month of Ramadan to wake up earlier at the time of Sahri and possibly perform some rakats of Tahajjud. But it was not easy. It was not easy. Afterwards, my dear respected brothers and sisters, what are we going to do? Are we going to leave it off? No. A method that we, they showed us and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also showed us that that mashallah after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the tawfiq to wake up in these nights of Ramadan wake up early for sahri after we have performed 20 rakats of tarawih inshallah continue with good deeds continue with good deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dear respected brothers and sisters he does not want to see that we stop he does not want to see that we just stop off totally what we have done in the month of Ramadan in the month of Ramadan of course we would have feel, feel, felt the blessings it would have been easy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have chained the shayateen and this is a great great ni'mat that we cannot thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough for the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us that you know out of Ramadan the shayateen come and they will try to make us sleep and they will say it's a long night why are you waking up why are you waking up why are you waking up and they will tap us and they will try to put us to sleep just as our mother puts a baby to sleep and she taps the baby mashallah you know and makes them comfortable the shaitan also out of ramadan he wants to make us he wants to make us comfortable so we have to understand that mashallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done us a great favor in the month of ramadan and after the month of ramadan we have to fight our soul we have to fight our nafs our nafs wants us to sleep at the time of tahajjud and shaitan he will pat us on our backs rest rest you have done a lot in the day rest but no we have to fight our soul and we have to fight the shaitan my dear respected brothers and sisters the rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said ahabbul a'mali ilallah al-halul murtahil the most beloved of actions to allah is al-halul murtahil and this has been interpreted as when a person he finishes one quran he doesn't stop there and close the quran he starts back this is why the sunnah of reading the quran my dear respected brothers and sisters when we finish from kul a'udhu bi rabbin nas we open back the quran to the beginning alhamdulillah rabbil alameen surah al-fatiha and then we start with surah al-baqarah hal al-murtahil when we finish something we start back again my dear respected brothers and sisters and mashallah we should not close our Qur'ans after the month of Ramadan for those who are non huffaz try for one juz a day and those who are huffaz the ulama mentioned that it is best that they read three juz a day if we cannot do that my dear respected brothers and sisters at least a little portion of the Qur'an at least a little portion of the Qur'an we should try to read on a daily basis one of the pious persons of the past, Bishr, he says that Inna qawman yata'abbaduna wa yajtahiduna fi Ramadan Faqala bi'sa al-qawm qawmun La ya'rifuna lillahi haqqan illa fi shahri Ramadan Inna al-salih al-ladhi yata'abbada wa yajtahidu as-sanata kullaha He says that you know what? The people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are servants of Allah are those who will worship Allah and they will strive in the month of Ramadan but how evil evil a group of people how bad a group of people they do not recognize the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except only in the month of Ramadan and that pious person is that worst person who worships Allah and he struggles for the sake of Allah throughout the entire year Alama Shibli Nu'mani Rahmatullahi Alayhi He was asked, Ayyu Afdal, Rajab or Sha'ban? He said, Kun Rabbaniyan, Wala Takun Sha'baniyan. Alama Shibli Nu'mani Rahmatullahi Alayhi He was asked, Which month is best, Rajab or Sha'ban? He said, Don't ask about doing good deeds about in Rajab or Sha'ban. What you need to become is a Rabbani. What you need to become is Rabbani doing good deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the entire year. 
Hadda Ummi Salma radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she says, especially for the women folk, Man kana alayhi qada'u min Ramadan, an yaqdiyahu al-ghad min yawm al-fitr. That person who has needs to make qada for the month of Ramadan, my dear respected brothers and sisters, Hadda Ummi Salma radiyallahu ta'ala anha says, male or female, they should do it right after yawm al-fitr, right after they have broken their fast. Ay, and mashallah, it is the day of Eid al-Fitr. So right after the Eid al-Fitr, they should continue. They should continue with their good deeds. My dear respected brothers and sisters, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us a lot of good sayings. His actions, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his actions is what we need to follow. He said, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلَّ the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, adwamuha wa inqalla. It is what is most continuous, even though it may be a little bit. Ma'adallah, you know, in the month of Ramadan, we can check ourselves. We can check ourselves how good an abid we are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we follow the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ati, or did we not follow the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ati? Our Ramadans every year, have become uh, you know, systematic. You start the first day of Ramadan, the second day of Ramadan, third day of Ramadan, the masajid are full with people who are going to perform the taraweeh salah, people who are going to perform their salah in jama'ah. Then afterwards, it becomes empty. And then coming down to the 27th night, mashallah, it becomes filled again. And then better yet for the last, you know, the last dua, of completion of Quran. That completion of Quran, mashallah, it is a mubarak time to come and make dua. Beyond the shadow of a doubt for everyone. But more so it was for those people, my dear respected brothers and sisters, who were continuous in standing up for 20 rakats, listening to the Holy Quran, st standing up for 20 rakats, listening to the Holy Quran, they will get the full reward. The full reward is not necessarily going to different masajid for the closing dua. That is Mubarak. Wherever dua is made upon completion, it is Mubarak. But, you know, people use the tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Alama Hafiz ibn Rajab Hanbali, he quotes it in his book. That Hada Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was continuous upon 11 rakats in and out of Ramadan. 8, 9, and 11. Eight rakats of tahajjud, three rakats out of it. People use it to say that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed eight rakats of tarawi. That's out. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Ramadan is out. That argument is not there anymore. But sufficient to say is that, mashallah, the two haramain sharifain, until today, they performed 20 rakats until now. So mashallah, mubarak ho. And blessed is, are those people who used to perform their 20 rakats the point that we are making now, after we have performed those 20 rakats, what are we going to perform for Al the Rasul sallallahu alayhi, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are we, how are we going to follow the footsteps of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after those 20 rakats? Some of the ulama divide qiyamul layl and tahajjud. They say qiyamul layl is before sleep and tahajjud is after sleep. How much are we going to perform, my dear respected brothers and sisters? We are speaking about being continuous to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we were just drawing a reference. If we have been complacent in Ramadan and we were negligent in Ramadan, then, you know, chances are it's more difficult for us to build up after Ramadan. If, mashallah, we were more continuous in Ramadan with 20 rakats, then inshallah we can do so afterwards. Khair. The Rasul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha. He does not place a burden upon a person that which he cannot bear. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his foot becoming swollen, that was not a burden upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibadat is not a burden upon us. What happens to us, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we like to just go for, for bronze and silver, and we don't like to go for gold. And we like to use those traditions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that teaches us, you know what? 
MashaAllah, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told one sahabi, stick up on the farz alone. As long as you do that, inshallah, Jannah is secured. Jannah is secured, my dear respected brothers and sisters. But what, a, what about the hadith that Jannah is a barren land? If you say, subhanallah, you will plant a tree in, in Jannah. So the more subhanallah that we say, we will inshallah plant more trees in Jannah. My dear respected brothers and sisters, the ulama of the past and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they get this attitude from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were not just complacent upon, I am, I am a believer. MashaAllah, Ramadan has come and gone. Inshallah, may Allah allow me to live to see another Ramadan. We have to be doing actions to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I appreciated your Ramadan. Oh Allah, after your Ramadan and after your forgiveness on the day of Eid, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I appreciate your forgiveness on the day of Eid. And Oh Allah, I am incapable of showing appreciation to you for all that you have forgiven from me. For all that you have forgiven from me. And all these, my dear respected brothers and sisters, are from the ethics of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are from the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Afala akuna abdan shakura. So sometimes we like the easy way out. But the question is, my dear respected brothers and sisters, when are we going to start making real effort, fasting on Mondays and Thursdays, fasting ayamul bid, fasting six days of shawwal? My dear respected brothers and sisters, this is what Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing. When he mentioned, hey, people, this is what we were mentioning, how the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala has said, eight rakats, to 11 rakats the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to perform in and out of Ramadan. Forget using it to only prove that Tarawih is eight rakats. Out of Ramadan, perform the 11 rakats. In and out of Ramadan. That is what the hadith teaches us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he performed eight rakats of tahajjud. Twelve, according to some traditions, my dear respected brothers and sisters. So we cannot perform eight, khair. Perform two. Wake up in the morning before before. Break of dawn, five minutes, ten minutes, at least perform two rakats. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who is going to ask for me? I come to the lowest heavens at that time. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Ramadan taught us about dua. We have to learn to beg from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was our training. And this is one of the objectives of this khutbah. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we learn from Ramadan. Now, mashallah. Throughout the 11 months afterwards, we have to make amal. And we have to practice. Do not become negligent. Negligent means it is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not accept our Ramadan. Woe unto those people. The ulama say that they were just waiting. It's a long, dried out fast. It's a long, boring month. And now afterwards, mashallah, it's not compulsory to fast anymore. No, mashallah. The people who love Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them and he wants to see what they are doing afterwards. And we should be covetous and yearning for the forgiveness of Allah. We should want to make dua to Allah. We should want to fast again, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We should yearn to wake up in the early hours of the morning. And if we don't wake up in the early hours of the morning, Look at what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. He made qadha when he slept away from his tahajjud salah. He made qadha of it. I'tikaf, subhanallah. We made a bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether we perform sunnah to i'tikaf or nafil i'tikaf, we came in the masjid in Ramadan, it was different. It was different, my dear respected brothers and sisters. As soon as the moon is seen for shawwal, we feel the difference. We feel the difference. But mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may He give us that constancy whereby we come in the, we come in the mosque, ma dumtu fi hadal masjid. I will perform i'tikaf as long as I'm in the masjid. And it will encourage us. We don't only stay outside. We do not have a cave that we can go to Hira, my dear respected brothers and sisters, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should come in the masjid, sit in the masjid, don't talk about worldly affairs in the masjid. Sit, 
ponder over the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the masjid. Open the holy book that we have opened in the month of Ramadan. My dear respected brothers and sisters, perform rakats of salah in the masjid. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was continuous upon i'tikaf so much so that one year he missed his i'tikaf in Ramadan. In the month of Shawwal, he made qadha of that i'tikaf. In the month of Shawwal, he made qadha of i'tikaf. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, we as believers, sometimes we, stop, we have to stop petting ourselves. We have to stop petting ourselves because you know what? My dear respected brothers and sisters, times are not getting better. Times are not getting better and shaitan is getting stronger and the, e the influence of evil is getting stronger. And when that is the case, the believers also have to step up their game. When that is the case, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the believers have to step up their game. MashaAllah, you know, we can, be, we can be helpful to other people. We can be helpful to other people and we can be kind. And we as believers, MashaAllah, there are Venezuelans coming into our country. You know what? The, one of the, the lessons of Allah Mahaviz ibn Rajab, he was saying that for a young man, after the month of Ramadan, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned a hadith, that the look of the eye is an arrow of shaitan. The look of the eye, one evil look, one evil glance, it is an arrow of shaitan. And with the coming of the Venezuelans in our shores, especially the young men, they teach us that we have to protect our gazes. Because women come with different cultures and different types of clothing. And our own Trinidadian women are like that also. But we as believers, my dear respected brothers and sisters, coming out of Ramadan, mashallah, protecting our gazes, then we will just lose everything with one glance. The halawat of Iman, we will lose it with one glance. On the contrary, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that when we lower our gaze, hadith of Imam Ahmad, when we lower our gaze, inshallah, and we protect our gaze, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us taste the sweetness of Iman, in our ibadat, and we will feel, we will taste the sweetness of the ibadat. We will taste the sweetness of the ibadat. My dear respected brothers and sisters, mashallah, help whoever we can help, but do it in a good way. We should give food, we should spend upon the poor. All the good things that we have learned in Ramadan, we should do it out of Ramadan. But if we do not protect our ibadah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, then we will become wasted. We will be wasted. If we, do not become, if we do not follow up the ibadat of Ramadan with ibadat out of Ramadan, then our iman will become weak. Our iman will become weak, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a beautiful jannah for the believers. We hope and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepts us and He accepts us and He allows us to enter into jannah. Because I will finally end, my dear respected brothers and sisters. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Subhanallah, look at the a'mal that he used to perform. And that is what we have to look at. We have to say, where are we? And we have to perform more a'mal. Where was the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And he said that, you know what? It is not an account of his actions. It is an account of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enveloping him. That is why he will enter into the jannah. And this is why we do more and more good actions. Because we want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will not enter into paradise by means of our own actions alone, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Yes, it is a means. And because it is a means, we have to keep on doing more and strive to do more. But because of the acceptance of Allah and the mercy of Allah, that is really what will enter us into the Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me for whatever wrong that I have said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq that inshallah we can live after the, Ram the month of Ramadan as we have lived in Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the blessings of Ramadan to keep up in our lives, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can protect us from sin and save us from sins inshallah until we see our next Ramadan. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَ أَنَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ